would like to welcome our dearest viewers via Nursat and Telelumir TV. On the occasion of the painful third anniversary of the Beirut port explosion, Nursat Jordan's office, represented by its director, Dr. Basim Samaan, and the team, prays to the Lord Jesus Christ to save Lebanon and protect its people from all harm. We shall begin with the significant headlines. The participation of Pope Francis in kicking off the events of the World Youth Day in Lisbon. The patriarchs and heads of churches in Jerusalem issue a statement regarding the extremist trespassing on the Al-Aqsa Mosque courtyards. Representing His Majesty the King, al khassani lights the torch of the Jerish festival. Welcome back. With the participation of His Holiness Pope Francis and under the theme Mary arose and went with haste, the events of the 37th World Youth Day commenced in the Portuguese capital Lisbon last Tuesday. Tens of thousands of young people from around the world took part in celebration. In a message addressed to the youth, His Holiness urged them to prepare joyful for this global event, to be filled with hope and to move forward. He emphasized that the Lord always walks with us even in our imperfections and is always near to assist us. He encouraged them to experience the joy of meeting with God and urged them not to remain idle, but to become champions of a world that is more just and fraternal. The closing Mass of the World Youth Day, which lasts until the 6th of this month, will be presided over by the Supreme Pontiff in the presence of thousands of young people from around the world. Nearly 200 youth from the Holy Land, including Jordan and Palestine, are participating in this global gathering. The patriarchs and heads of churches in Jerusalem issued a statement condemning the intrusion of right-wing radical groups into the courtyards of Al-Aqsa Mosque. This intrusion strikes at the essence of the sanctity of Jerusalem, the city of peace, and restricts the freedom of worship therein. This statement emphasized that Jerusalem is their holy city and is imperative to preserve the current situation in it. They also stress the necessity of understanding the delicate current balance and preventing actions that could distribute this delicate equilibrium. In their statement, the patriarchs and heads of churches called on the international community and all those with noble intentions to pay attention to their plea and make every effort to immediately put an end to the provocations that violate the sanctity of their city. They reaffirmed their exclusive historical support for Al-Aqsa Mosque and its status, along with other Islamic and Christian religious sites, under the Hashemite guardianship. Their aim is for the flame of peace and brotherly love to shine from the holy city and for everyone to move forward together on the path of understanding, reconciliation, justice, and peace. In a related context, a solidarity protest and a sit-in were held at the square of the monastery and church of Mar Elias in Mount Carmel in Haifa. The protest was in response to the recent attacks by settlers targeting the church and the monastery. Several bishops, priests, and parishioners from the Galilee region, as well as the mayor of Haifa, participated in the protest. During the sit-in, Archbishop Musa al-Hajj, the head of the Greek Catholic Archdiocese of Haifa and the Holy Land, stated that the attacking group continues to repeat their assaults. He expressed their concern and stance regarding the changes and developments and how to address them in the future. On behalf of His Majesty King Abdullah II, Prime Minister Dr. Bishr al khassani inaugurated the 37th edition of the Jerish Festival for Culture and Arts. The opening ceremony was attended by several ministers, Arab guests, intellectuals, artists, and media figures. Dr. Haifa Najjar, the Minister of Culture, stated, Today we light the festival's torch with the active participation of Jordanian and sisterly countries' creators. Ahmad al Atum, the mayor of Jerish, expressed that this year's festival is characterized by being an extension of the joy witnessed in our beloved kingdom during the wedding of His Royal Highness Crown Prince Al Hussein bin Abdullah II. He prayed that happiness continues to prevail in our dear homeland. The opening ceremony, which involved the participation of a thousand artists, poets, and music bands from Arab and foreign countries, featured folklore shows and patriotic songs dedicated to the occasion. The festival program also includes theoretical performances, cinematic screenings, poetry evenings, intellectual seminars, entertainment activities, and a carnival for families and children. Under the blessings of His Eminence Archmedrite Athanasius Qaqish and under the supervision of His Eminence Father Yohanna Haddad and Father Theodosius Haddad, the activities of the Orthodox Summer Camp for Sunday Schools concluded. The camp was held at St. George Church in Shatana with the participation of guides and students from Sunday Schools in Zarqa and the northern region of the kingdom. The camp's programs designed for students in the middle age group included various spiritual meetings and recreational activities. Additionally, there were interactive activities, cultural and social lectures. 
In the same context, the youth camp of St. George's Catholic Church in Fahes was opened for the older and younger children of the parish. The summer camp inaugurated by His Eminence Archmandrite Boulos Haddad, the pastor of the church, and attended approximately 150 girls and boys. The camp activities included spiritual meeting, both indoor and outdoor games, handicrafts, drawings, and various art activities. Archmandrite Christophorus presided over the Divine Liturgy at the entrance of the Lord into the Temple in Swafia Cathedral on the occasion of the 8th Sunday after Pentecost. In his sermon during the liturgy, the economist Dr. Ibrahim Dabur said that today the Church is celebrating the Feast of the Fathers of the first six ecumenical councils of the Feast of St. Marina the Martyr. He explained that these saints preserve our faith and beliefs, and we should understand these doctrines and believe in the Lord Jesus, who was born of the Virgin, as a true God and a true man to redeem human nature. Several fathers and deacons assisted in the service, and a gathering of believers attended the liturgy. The chanting choir, led by the economist Alexander Mkhemer, also participated in the service. His Beatitude Cardinal Louis Raphael Sacco, the Patriarch of the Chaldean Catholic Church, celebrated the Divine Liturgy held in Mar Yusuf Cathedral in the town of Ankawa, Erbil Governorate, in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. Several priests and deacons assisted in the service, and a large number of believers attended the Mass. In his sermon, Patriarch Sacco asked the attendees to pray for the Chaldean Catholic Church, which is currently facing challenging circumstances. He explained the Gospel of the Third Sunday of Summer, which speaks about the healing of the blind man who believed in Jesus, the light of the world. He emphasized that whoever follows Jesus will not walk in darkness, meaning they will not live in sin. We have reached the end of our broadcast, dear viewers. Before we conclude, here's a recap of the highlights covered herein. The participation of Pope Francis a kinking off the events of the World Youth Day in Lisbon. The Patriarchs and Heads of Churches in Jerusalem issue a statement regarding the extremist trespassing on the Al-Aqsa Mosque courtyards. A protest was held at the monastery and church of Mar Elias in Haifa rejecting the attacks by settlers. For more details, please visit our website, nursadjo.org. Have a wonderful day and until we meet again.